Hello everyone. So, in Gnosis, we have what we call the three factors that assure success for the spiritual aspirant's development of becoming a complete human being. These are three factors that we should work with daily in order to most effectively revolutionize our consciousness. So, as you can see by the name of the video, they are birth, death, and sacrifice. So, what are these? Well, number one, death. Death means to die psychologically, spiritually, to experience the mystical transcendental death of the ego and thus a purification of the causes of harmful actions within ourselves. So remember that we cannot be born again without first dying. There cannot be space for the new to manifest if the old is not first removed. So this is the death of the many eyes, the many me, 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 within ourself, right? The self-willed ego, you know? How can we will to do what we are supposed to do in alignment with divinity if the ego will is dominating our actions? Obviously, then we cannot will to do anything consciously without the death of those former eyes, those former desires within us. And I'll be clarifying on that a bit more in a future video where I'll uh, go a bit more deeper into following our inner being, no matter what, you know, not needing or having to rely on any book or master or guru, uh, but only rely and obey the real guru that is within each of us and knows exactly what we need, regardless of, uh, you know, what we read or learn or what other people tell us, etc. So next is number two, birth. This means to be born again as a soul or even to create a soul. Because if one is unconscious, mechanical and goes around life in a purely mechanical way, then obviously there is really essentially almost no soul, right? So this is the creation or birth of a soul. And this is only liberated and attained also from the death of ego. Ego being the thing that covers our virtue with a vice. So birth is also to do with transmutation. Transmutation in both a spiritual, psychological, and also root primal sexual sense, the deepest root part of us. As you know, it is through sex that we are born and through it again that we can be reborn. And this is why we have these teachings of Tantra. Tantra in the sense of, you know, life and a spiritual path. You know, everything is sexual, psychological, emotional, uh, everything. So this is not just about transmutation either, but also alchemy or white tantra, which we can practice with a partner in order to birth real love into our life, birth the Christ, which is this love. Uh, I'll be doing a video on how to do alchemy as well soon. So, you know, to be born again also means to give birth to the solar bodies of the being, as talked about in the video about how to work with the moon. So, instead of birthing a child externally, we birth a new type of being inside of us, a new way of being. So this is about working towards the birth of a bodhisattva within us or a Buddha within us. Remember that Buddha is not just one man or a person, but uh, Buddha is 
uh, a potentiality within all of us. The seed exists within all of us if we were just to water it. Uh, actually, as well, uh, a lot of you may notice that when you first begin on the path, you may have a dream of seeing a beautiful baby with full of light and innocence. Uh, this is reflective of this second factor of birth, to be born again of the spirit instead of just the flesh when we, you know, were physically born. We also have to be born spiritually as well. So, uh, you know, this signifies, this, this sort of dream, this sim very spiritual and symbolic dream, symbolizes our new sense of awareness in expanded dimensions of nature. Okay, and so number three, sacrifice. This means sacrifice for humanity, to help others to work for the benefit of others. Because what good is it if we only work for ourselves? You know, when we realize that all is one, we realize that other beings are just a reflection of ourself and that we can't ever really be fully liberated until everyone is liberated with us. And with this understanding, we also understand that by helping others, we also help ourselves too. That what we give out, we also receive back. So as we give to others, we are also giving to ourselves. Now, I know uh, a lot of you might interpret that as, you know, or, or ask, isn't that ultimately selfish? But it's not. Because you have to genuinely want to help others in order to, in order for this to work, right? So sacrifice means to be radically generous with no expectation of getting anything in return. This is to integrate the virtue of charity within us, to show others the way to awaken out of suffer, uh, suffering. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, uh, we tell them spiritual teachings, but, uh, you know, we can alleviate the suffering of others simply by example or simply by listening to someone, right? So there's many ways uh, that we can do this third factor of, of sacrifice. So, you know, this is altruism genuinely loving our fellow brothers and sisters and recognizing them as part of ourself. So what we put out, we receive. And so if we give spiritual knowledge, we also receive deeper understanding in return. That is the law, a cosmic law, which you could also call karma or dharma as well. So those are the three factors of gnosis, the three factors of gaining direct experience of gnosis, birth, death, and sacrifice. These are the three ingredients of active consciousness that lead to the awakening of the soul. And there is an emphasis on these three things in particular, because if we forget just one of them, then the other two get imbalanced. Or if we forget two of them, then it is impossible to do the only one we are interested in. Uh, for example, let's say we are practicing transmutation or alchemy with a partner, doing pranayama, saving our energies, being chaste, etc., but not working on dissolving the ego not working on knowing ourselves and overcoming ourselves. Well, obviously, uh, one will gain a lot of energy, right? Where will that energy go? It will go into our ego, and we will probably then become more lustful, more materialistic, more restless, thinking about ourselves, etc. Remember that it is the ego that is the reason we never have enough energy. It uses the sacred energy within us to create illusory 
reality for itself. So it's really important that、uh, we work on the ego, especially if we want to incorporate tantra and transmutation, because、uh, that gives us a lot of energy. But what good is that energy if it all goes to our ego? And so let's also say that、uh, we are also always trying to help. Other people, and we are always doing the third factor: sacrifice for others.、Uh, but what if we're doing that, but without helping ourselves first, without working on the ego first? Well, then our help for others will clearly be flawed, right? Perhaps we will become more prideful about our work and our good deeds, or start expecting things in return, or become judgmental about others, or be disappointed that people don't approve of us, etc. Or maybe we focus only on destroying the ego, but without transmuting our energy or helping others in any way. Well, obviously, then in that case, our progression with the ego will be very, very slow. We won't、uh, advance as fast as we really should. So it's clear that we need a balance of these three factors, which is first. Death of our defects, which is sanctity, then birth of the soul, which is chastity, and then sacrifice for others, which is charity. So these three magical ingredients of sanctity, chastity, and charity purify the consciousness in a revolutionary and absolute way. You know,、uh, to tell you a quick story,、uh, before I knew all of this, when I first met my Gnostic teacher years ago, I was confused by him. You know,、um, because he was doing his PhD at the time, and you know,、uh, I was doing my、uh, philosophy degree at that time, which I was, you know, I thought was already stressful enough. Never mind doing a PhD, and so. <laughs> I was confused by him because he was holding these meetings about the Gnostic teachings every week in person, and he gave us those teachings for over six years without ever asking for anything in return—not even a penny, not even you know any recognition, any loyalty. You know,、uh, anyone could leave whenever they want. You know, whatever.、Uh, so. You know that is、uh, the first time I really saw、uh, true charity in someone, apart from you know my mother or something. But、um, it's very rare for us to see that, especially with spiritual knowledge, right? And everyone、uh, always charging or asking for money or subscribers and things like that. And So you know, and I also wondered how every single question people asked him, he was able to answer them with,、uh, with confidence and precision, and so much、uh, full of insight and wisdom, despite even being in his early thirties at the time. So of course, now I understand that he was working with these three factors: helping others selflessly. Uh, getting a lot of energy through transmutation, and、uh, also dying internally, so that his, you know, his ego doesn't get in the way of any of it. So you know, it's one thing to study these three factors, but another thing to really see the powerful results of them、uh, in practice. And Jesus also summarized these three factors in the following quote. If any will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Now, of course, most people will interpret that with、uh, the usual preconception about、uh, what they think Jesus means here in a more in a very simplistic manner. But obviously, as with most of the Bible, there is a deeper meaning here to be extracted. So the part where it says. Let him deny himself means death. To deny oneself is to deny the false self, the ego, meaning to deny one's lust, pride, anger, envy, gluttony, greed, 
laziness, right? To work against those things and uh, provoke those things within us in order to really see it and then deny it and study it and know it, right? In order to overcome it and ultimately to kill it, right? And the part where it says to take up his cross means birth. The cross represents how forces in nature engage in union to create life. You know, usually when you look at the cross, uh, you see uh, uh, Jesus or just you think of Christianity, but there's two lines here, two uh, lines of significance, the horizontal line and the vertical line. Uh, The cross represents, you know, these two lines represents uh, masculine crossed with the feminine to create life. It is a symbol of alchemy or tantra. So take up his cross doesn't mean to wear a crucifix or hang a cross on your wall or whatever. Uh, it, it's something psychological and spiritual. It is an energetic thing within ourselves. And you know, what's also beautiful about the cross uh, or the crucifix or just the symbol of Christ is that uh, it is a beautiful symbol that represents all three of these factors, you know, to die to oneself, to be born again as Christ was, and also to sacrifice oneself for others, giving our very last drop of blood to others. And so uh, sacrifice is the part where it says, follow me, which means to follow the example that Jesus acted out in his life, which is to serve others with humility and love. So, you know, that really points towards uh, the greatest thing that Jesus gave us, which is his example of his life. You know, he was uh, quite different to other masters. He didn't uh, give so much um, intellectual teaching. He actually uh, performed the teaching. He performed the act of awakening consciousness through the story of his life. And Buddha also summarized these three factors by saying, commit not a single unwholesome action, cultivate a wealth of virtue, tame this mind of ours. This is the teaching of all the Buddhas. So unwholesome action means to act in service to others. And cultivate a wealth of virtue means the birth or transmutation of vice into virtue. And tame this mind of ours means the death of the ego. And it's nice Uh, the way it says tame the mind, because remember that ego is not singular, but plural. It is many. There are many uh, entities within each of us, uh, you know, and we have many desires. So there's no such thing as uh, a simple ego death. And, uh, you know, just one day it happens and then you have no ego. Um, No, you know. Uh, when one ego dies, uh, another arises, and uh, hence it is a constant taming of the mind, which uh, Buddhism teaches very well. And these three factors are also hidden in the Buddhist teachings of what is known as bhavana, dana, and sila. Uh, You can go into the meanings of these yourself. I'll leave resources down below as always, but to explain simply, bhavana means cultivation of consciousness, which means to liberate consciousness from ego. It means to, um, you know, stop sleeping and awaken with conscious attention. That is bhavana. And dana means generosity, to be in service of others. And uh, sila means purity or virtue and morality, which again means to birth a new way of being within us. And so to simplify these three factors, we can also see them all as ultimately one principle, 
You see, when we study things and then we want to live it in order to really understand it, uh, you know, we can't go around thinking of these three things intellectually, repeatedly, and mechanically, right? So, in order to put them all into motion at the same time, then it is better to think of them uh, all as one thing. They all mean one action, one motion within us. Uh, that sprouts from you know natural uh, awakened consciousness from the being, and um, this is more apparent, of course, when we really practice it, because uh, you will see that you know uh, you cannot really have birth without death, and you cannot have death without sacrifice. So, hence, all three factors are one practice. And so, as we come to the end of this video, I just want to clarify what it really means to sacrifice oneself for others. Um, I think the first two factors are, are relatively clear. Um, you know, I've made a lot of videos on uh, the first factor of death, and um, I've done a few on uh, birth, but, um, you know, I, I'll be making more soon. But yes, um, to clarify the third one, because I think most of us interpret that as uh, we have to do something extremely elevated, right? Like, like very uh, holy act of kindness like Jesus did, right? But of course, you know, that's not necessarily the case. You know, since I've made this channel, uh, there's a few of you who have been inspired to teach spirituality to others as well, and that's great. Um, but also remember that this third factor of helping others first applies to where we find ourselves here and now, and, you know, the people in our direct reality around us, uh, which in most cases means uh, to be more selfless, charitable, compassionate, uh, attentive to our friends, family, colleagues, people in our community, etc. You know, it can be very simple, this uh, third factor, such as, uh, you know, just being a shoulder to lean on, offering to help someone with something. Uh, being attentive to someone's emotions and asking if they're okay, if they feel off. You know, if we pay attention to our day, uh, it's usually the case that it's full of opportunities uh, to sacrifice our ego in order to do right action for others, you know? And, uh, you know, let me tell you, you feel far better about yourself, you know? And you come to uh, a much closer union with your own conscience when you start practicing this instead of uh, always living a sort of a spiritual existential crisis of narcissistic uh, contemplating about one's own existence all the time, right? Which I'm sure we're all familiar with. So, you know, eventually you get tired of that and it also becomes a source of suffering and so this is just a very powerful way uh, to alleviate that to just dedicate some part of our day to being selfless and to not be in that narcissistic bubble of uh, our own uh, personal challenges. I'm not saying that's wrong, of course. We have to study ourselves. We have to uh, find that connection within. But it takes time. We, we need patience and practice. So again, this is about balancing these three factors. If we are just working on the ego but not helping others, it becomes uh, imbalanced. We uh, go into that narcissistic tendency to try and uh, become perfect and kill our egos all the time. Um, and we do it in a very stressful way because we don't do it for the sake of others, you know? And uh, remember, you can't overcome the ego. You can't kill it without love. And, uh, you know, so love is found in other people, in the relationship with other people.
If you're always angry and uh, trying to really overcome and kill every single ego and in a really like forceful uh, way and you're always stressed and moody, then obviously uh, there is a lack of love there and it will it is impossible to uh, kill the ego in that way. So yes, this third factor is not always about being a hero for everyone on a large scale, but simply just paying attention to our fellow humanity in our everyday reality. It's very simple. And, you know, sure, one day it may evolve into acts of larger scale, but what good is it to create a great YouTube channel or write a best-selling book if we still are uncharitable to our close ones, you know? We should all help others according to our abilities and we all start at our uh, sort of lowest point, right? You have to humble yourself in order to be elevated. And so, with that in mind, uh, I want to end this video with a nice example from another friend on the path who is an actress. Uh, her name is Hennessy Schmidt. She was in the series Vikings, uh, and she's also a student of Gnosis. And I'm going to leave you with a PDF to read in the description below called our friend Gita, be sure to uh, check it out. Uh, this PDF is from the Gnostic Method app, uh, which will give you a deeper understanding of the third factor. And it also talks about Hennessy's journey with this as well, her journey with uh, the third factor of helping others. And so we see her journey as uh, just one example. And as you'll uh, read about in the PDF, uh, you'll see that it points out the fact that she followed the guidance from her inner being to fulfill a specific purpose to help others, even when everyone else told her not to. And this calling from within involved her undertaking a huge project in Uganda called the Little Bridge Foundation. Now, I'll let the PDF do most of the talking for how much purpose and happiness she's found in helping others with this project. And you'll also see links there too if you'd like to see the website and YouTube and also the Patreon if you want to support her cause, which I'll also leave in the description below. Now, of course, as you'll read in the PDF, it's not mandatory, but if you do feel a calling to support, then, you know, why not? Um... Even Master Samael on Veor, he encouraged uh, Gnostic students to tithe. Tithe, which means to give a portion of our income towards, you know, whatever uh, organization or movement that we feel is helping to spread uh, what we understand as uh, universal love and wisdom and truth and justice, right? And I think that's reasonable, right? And uh, not a lot to ask for, you know? A, a lot of the time uh, in spiritual communities, we often make a distinction between uh, material money and spiritual purpose. But really, uh, there's no difference there, you know? All the money we get and everything in our life, whether spiritual or material, uh, is karma. If you really understand karma, everything in our life is a result, is an energetic exchange of some sort, uh, materialized into matter. So, you know, it does make a difference when you uh, choose to support a certain... Um, organization or charity, just in the same way that uh, using your money t for evil or for buying uh, drugs or alcohol negatively impacts your life, right? It's, it's exactly the same on the other end of the scale. <laughs> so, you know, wouldn't our world uh, be a much better place if everyone was forced to just give a small amount of their income to uh, a good charity. 
of course, right? Uh, instead of just using all of our money for ourselves all the time. This is uh, very much connected to what we were just seeing uh, earlier in this video about using all of our energy just for one factor, such as uh, just for trying to overcome the ego. Uh, maybe we uh, try to use all of our money for uh, just overcoming the ego. Maybe we're always buying uh, so much incense or going to... Uh, reiki healing sessions and things like that or when uh, really beyond all of the spending of our money how we could just give some of it at least to others and uh, that is probably better than most therapies or crystals or uh, more oils that uh, could <laughs> you know that seemingly uh, are designed to help us well anyway I do hope you read the essay in the description called Our Friend Gita. Uh, I'll pin it in the comment section as well below in case uh, you're a bit of a technophobe and can't figure it out. <laughs> and um, it's not just about Hennessy's journey. That's really only just used as an example, but... Uh, the PDF is intended to really clarify this third factor of sacrifice for humanity. Uh, so, yeah, definitely uh, have a read, especially if you're still wondering about ways in which you can integrate it into your own life and practice and how exactly you'll benefit from it as well. So, yes, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, ask questions as always if you like down below and thank you all have a beautiful weekend and see you all soon